As Google continues to move towards a more automated, hands-off set of features on its ad platform, we're having to learn to adapt and really get the most out of these newer and often more opaque products. One of the first and more controversial of these features was Google's shift away from expanded text ads where you had total control of headlines, descriptions, and when they appeared together, to responsive search ads or RSAs for short. Responsive search ads are different in the sense that you provide Google a list of headlines and descriptions which it dynamically serves in a number of different variations. Now, of course, this removes an element of control and it becomes a little harder to form a cohesive ad, but how can we use this to our advantage? If you're new here, I'm Daryl and I run an e-commerce agency where we've been experimenting with responsive search ads for years and have devised our own set of best practices for getting the most out of them to drive more traffic and more sales. Join me as I break three of these down for you in today's video. Now, this first point may seem a little simple, but I can't emphasize enough how important it is when you're setting up RSAs for the first time. The key principle behind responsive search ads is that you provide Google the assets and it builds the ad. From there, it uses machine learning to present as many variations as possible to users and eventually figures out how to show the right ad to the right user at the right time. But in order for Google Ads to do that successfully, we need to give it as many options as possible to test, or it's very possible the platform will decide on a winning ad from a limited number of assets, when a much more engaging ad could have been put together if it just had a few more options. When you're setting up your RSA, you can add up to 15 headlines and four descriptions. Maybe that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but Together, that lets Google present up to a huge 43,680 different variations. If Google manages to find a winning ad out of this many permutations, we can be pretty sure it's one of the best ads we can put forward. If you're struggling to think of 15 headlines, remember that while it helps having most of these product-specific and benefit-led, they don't all have to be. I've had some wins from having the brand name as one of the headlines, as well as some more generic headlines like Order Now or New Collection. One thing that's important to keep in mind when we're writing ad copy is exactly what users are looking for depending on the keywords they've searched for. Let's say you have an ad group built around sales keywords. It's safe to say that users are looking for a discount or at least good value. That's one of the limitations of an automated feature like RSAs. To a degree, we know what users are looking for, but Google doesn't. So it's on us to include those in the assets that we provide it. In a situation like this, I'd suggest using a handful less product or benefit led headlines and replacing these with copy lines that use some of the highest volume keywords in that ad group. So for the example we're looking at, it's worth testing headlines like browse the sale or up to 70% off. This ad from Fossil is a good example. Notice how little of the ad focuses on any features of the watch or details on the brand. It knows what users are looking for and caters to it. When you're deciding which keywords you should focus on in your headlines, it's worth looking at what's driving the most volume and engagement from a search term report and just using the top three or four somewhere in your RSAs and seeing how these perform after a couple of weeks. Beyond this, it's also worth experimenting with dynamic keyword insertion, where Google automatically places a keyword from your ad group into an ad if that's what triggered your ad to appear. However, in my experience, this only takes control out of your hands even more when using RSAs, and they tend to work the best when you marry up the format's automation with a little manual optimization. I'd suggest getting your hands a little dirty when it comes to working out what keywords work best. A useful feature that can often be overlooked as you set up a responsive search ad is the fact you can pin headlines to certain positions, meaning that no matter what, if Google chooses to show one of your assets, it will only be in the position you've pinned it to. For example, 
if you pinned a headline with your brand name to position one, it would always be the first thing a user reads when they see your ad. Now, the reason this is so overlooked is because Google actually recommends that you don't pin any of your headlines. The thinking behind this is that it gives the platform less restrictions when it comes to experimenting with how to switch up presenting your assets. If you're only just getting started with responsive search ads, I'd actually agree with Google here, but if your ads have been live for a few weeks or more, and we have some data to look at, there are some options for us to strategically pin some elements as we start to optimize what we're running. The first way to use the pin feature is pretty simple, to make sure what you're running makes sense. Let's say you have 15 headlines in your RSA, but three of them are call to actions. It's very possible that Google will occasionally present all three of these at once. Imagine getting served an ad that reads, shop now, order now, browse the sale. Not a great look. Luckily, the pin feature more or less mitigates the risk here. If we pin all three of these call to actions to, let's say, the second position, that's the only place any of them can appear. So they'll never be in a situation where more than one is appearing at the same time. The second way to get the most out of the pin feature is when you want to get some more concrete learnings around how a particular copy line is performing. Reporting on RSAs is often pretty opaque, so we have to get a bit creative to extract some learnings. Let's say you want to learn if always having your brand name in the headline of your ad increases CTR. The way you do this is by creating one RSA where the brand name is always pinned at position one and run it at the same time as an RSA with the same copy but with nothing pinned. If we see stronger performance from the ad with the business's name pinned as a headline, we can safely assume this is something we want to keep doing. So we can either keep it pinned or add more headlines and descriptions that feature the brand name in some way. Now you've started to pick up some of the tools you can use to take back a little control from Google and start to manually optimize your ad copy. You'll have access to a lot more levers you can pull to start increasing your click through rate and getting more traffic to your store. When it comes to copy, we should always be testing. And as I find more ways to get the most out of Google's more automation focused features, I'll be sure to make videos around them. If you found this video more useful and want to keep learning about how to use Google Ads and other platforms to increase sales on your e-commerce store, subscribe to my channel, where I post videos like this every week. Together that lets... Uh, computer's doing bing bongs halfway through. Uh, let's, let's turn off the computer bing bongs, shall we? Doop. Huge, 46,000. No, not 46,000. <laughs> Oops. Oh, and caters to. Got that wrong. After a couple of weeks. Meaning, no matter what, if Google chose. When they say. Never be 